Okay, so what happens? Something will take place in the system and then the system will respond back with one of two things. Number one, maybe the, the, the system will say, okay, sorry, no cars found. So the customer will get a notification that according to his or her requirements, there is no car available. But also, if the car is available, you're looking at another output that the system provides to the customer. It's a list of available cars and some details about them. How do we represent that in the context diagram? They are arrows from the system to the customer. So a notification saying that, sorry, no cars found, or available car list. Again, notice these are data that are going from the system to the customer. No verbs here also. All right. At this point, assuming that there are cars available, the customer can then select the car. So this is an input to the system. And notice this input is just the click of a button. So it doesn't have to be always entering data. But when you're clicking a button, you're actually providing data to the system, whether you're typing it or not, it's a different story, okay? So what the customer is doing is providing the car choice, the car choice to the system. Okay, so the customer provided the car choice to the system. The system at this point would calculate the total based on the uh, rate, based on the period, and it would provide back summary of all this information to the customer. So we're looking at an output that I, the customer, can see. So basically, I'm looking at something that the system is giving me, okay? And this is what we call here a summary of the rental. So the rental summary is going from the system to the customer. What else? This is a page that has both output and input. A lot of pages do that. So if I want to continue, I can confirm my reservation at this point. I didn't say yet that I want it. But if I fill out this information here with my name, email, credit card number, expiry date, and confirm, then I'm giving something to the system, okay? and this would be represented as the customer reservation information or info. So you see, I have a few pieces of data, collected them all in one data flow called customer reservation info. Okay, moving on, what will happen at this point? I provided credit card information. The credit card has to be authorized by the bank. Okay, so basically now I'm, I will introduce the second external entity, uh, which is the bank. And the bank can either send uh, that the card was authorized and it was charged, or maybe the card was declined. Okay, so the bank comes into the picture. The system takes whatever it got from the customer and gives it to the bank. Remember, the customer is not interacting with the bank directly. If they do, then it has nothing to do with our system, right? So the credit card info goes to the bank. The authorization comes from the bank to the system, if the card is authorized, of course. But here the authorization can mean either yes or no. So it can be an okay authorization or a reject authorization. If it's okay, the customer would receive the invoice, the confirmation of how much was taken from their car and so on. If that happens, then I need to make sure that the car cannot be rented by somebody else because I already took the customer's money. So the system would send rental, not uh, rental notification for the garage saying that reserve this car 
from that date to that date meaning make it unavailable for everybody else and when the customer come comes they can pick it up and use it that was one scenario another scenario now if the card or the credit card was declined you still get an authorization you don't delete any of the arrows because they are a possibility however there needs uh, to be an extra arrow a data flow uh, which is a notification for the customer saying that the credit card was declined maybe enter another card or try again okay so at this point we finish the context diagram in summary it's a diagram that represents the system as one single process usually we draw it in the middle there are external entities that communicate with this process they are drawn on the edge of the page and the data flow that connect them one rule also additional rule about context diagrams the arrows must not uh, cross each other okay uh, and another rule you probably already noticed there are no data stores in a context diagram the reason being it's a very high level diagram no details I don't care what I save at this point okay the data stores would come in in the next diagram which is diagram 0 diagram 0 is a diagram that takes context diagram and it details it expands the system itself which is process zero into many other processes it's a very important diagram because it really represents the high level functionality the processes of your system okay of course it's a child of the context diagram meaning I am building it based on the context diagram so remember that if I'm building it based on the context diagram then it makes sense that I would start from here from my context diagram however the system itself that little uh, box in the middle will be expanded into many processes that take place in the system of course we need to start from scratch now remember all of these data flows and I will explain it in a second must be also available in diagram zero all right so let us start at this point you will use the details from your system requirements to be able to uh, describe your processes so the first process is check availability data flow diagrams by the way don't have an order so number one number two number three doesn't really make a difference much but logically speaking we take it step by step so we try to imagine what's going on on this website well first is a customer coming to the website and looking for a car to rent so the first process is to check the availability availability of a car notice that the number of the process is one in context diagram it was process zero so here we don't have zero we have one two three four five okay notice also that the name of the process starts with a verb check availability okay so we're going back to normal processes here so the customer provides an input to this process which is the rental requirements date return date place and so on this process it will do something inside which is to see if the car is available on those dates where will it get the information from well there's a data store remember data stores are usually database tables or places where we store data the cars data store number d1 provides the car list for this process so now the process has the customer requirements it has a car list it will do its thing we don't care how by the way right we care what 